Way back in 1992, uh, my wife Mary Jane and I moved here and our daughter from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And we started looking around and couldn't find the fine chocolates that we uh, grew accustomed to uh, at a, some favorite places we had up in Cleveland. So we started asking our friends and, they, and we said, there's gotta be a chocolate store around here. This city's so big, Where, where's the chocolate store? And they said, well, we don't think we have a chocolate store. And Mary Jane said in the back of her mind, someday if they don't put one in someday, I'm gonna try to figure out how to bring one to Bowling Green. So she let that go and uh, we were there for seven years, went back to Cleveland for a new job uh, for about five years. And actually, make a long story short, we came back in 2005 and this is now our permanent home. And there still wasn't a chocolate store. So my wife says, I'm still gonna look into this some more. And what she found out then was uh, about an organization called RCI, Retail Confectioners International. And Retail Confectioners International uh, was an organization that specialized in chocolate making. And so she contacted them and found out how to start uh, taking courses to become a chocolatier. And so the rest is history. My mom is Mary Jane, the famous Mary Jane, and that is actually her name. Um, she originally named the store Bowling Green Chocolates. And um, on some prodding, she decided that it was probably best that we do Mary Jane's, so. I think it's important just for the local business and for the people in Bowling Green to have something unique that they can come get. Um, it's different than stuff they find in the stores and it has a, that more personalized touch. So I think that is what sets us apart from other people. We are one of a very small um, handful of chocolatiers that uses uh, Belgian chocolate. So we use a very high grade chocolate. So it is a very um, kind of different product because it's all handmade. Um, well, we get the chocolate in these big blocks from a company. Um, and what we do is we melt it down and we temper it is what it's called in our big machine. And then what we do is we have something to put in the middle of it. And then we run them through the machine and then we have a cooling tunnel that takes about five minutes to go through. And when they get out on the other side, they're ready to go out on the shelf. So we put them in cups and we put them out on the shelf. A lot of times we're approached by, um, by customers saying, you know, oh, can't you just melt it down and put some chocolate on strawberries and have them dipped right away? And it's not that simple. You have to temper chocolate. It's a scientific process. It's not a, it's not something that happens just by putting chocolate in the microwave. We actually have to take the temperature. We melt it only to a certain temperature. It can't get over 120 degrees or it'll burn. And then um, we take it down to a certain temperature which feeds crystals into the chocolate. It feeds good crystals in. So it gets kind of, it, it's more, it's, it's a lot more complicated than, you know, than one would think. Well, I'm very proud of the fact when I eat it how good it is. You know, the quality of it is uh, uh, never in question. So it's uh, it's very good. It's uh, I became sort of a snob, I guess, a chocolate snob. People teased me a little bit. I, I won't eat Hershey's anymore because I like ours. Ours has much more cocoa butter in it, the higher percentage. The, the finer chocolates have that, and you definitely can tell the dif difference when you bite into it. Quality is very important to us. Um, we want to make sure that each one of our packages that goes out, each piece of chocolate that we go out is suitable for the customers. Sometimes our chocolate goes out of temper and it still tastes good. It just will look a little cloudy or something like that. And we can't sell that because that's part of our quality control is we want everything to look tip top, perfect shape when we put it out. I really like um, the customers and making people happy when they you know, have that feeling of kind of like their childhood all over again is really satisfying, rewarding. One of my favorite things is, especially when I make something personally, is when they want to try it and I give them a sample and they're like, this is the best chocolate I've ever tasted. This is better than Godiva, better than Ghirardelli. Um, and when they are excited to come back, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tell all my friends about this. I'm gonna get all my gifts here. That's special. That's very special to us that they see us as something unique and something different that they want to come back and get again. Well, it, it actually improves the quality of life, I think, for the, uh, the citizens of the uh, area. Uh, fine chocolate is a, sort of a, uh, 
uh, a little luxury that uh, uh, anybody can afford. And in my, in my opinion, it, there's nothing better than a good fine chocolate after uh, lunch or dinner, or breakfast even for me. <laughs> It's definitely different than any job I ever thought I would have. Um, I wish I could smell it still. Every customer that comes in is like, oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. But since the second week, I haven't been able to smell it. But it's just really cool to, when you tell people, I work in a candy shop, and they always assume, is there just like chocolate running down the walls? I'm like, not exactly, but it's just a really fun environment. And especially at it being a family business, having um, Mary and her daughter Marie working here and then when Gary comes in too, just the family atmosphere, they make you feel like fam part of their family even though you're not.